What do you do when you have a ton of leftover chicken because you just got overzealous and roasted 10 pounds of chicken leg quarters? Well, you make enchiladas with them one night and then the next night you make chicken pot pie. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do tonight, but I'm gonna have to start with my pastry crust. And the first thing I'm gonna do is have a cup and a half of flour right here and half a teaspoon of baking powder because you want just a little bit of puffiness to it. I have one teaspoon of kosher salt and two teaspoons of sugar because I really like my pie dough a little sweet even though it's going into a savory crust. So I'm gonna mix it all together by hand just like this. Okay. So everybody knows that the fluffiness of the pie crust actually comes from cold butter. Butter has to be like super, super cold. So that way as it melts and incorporates into the dough, it gives off little bits of steam that give that really lovely flakiness. So what I have are two sticks of butter, which comes out to one cup of butter, and it's fresh out of the freezer. And the easiest way to get this into my flour mixture is with a cheese grater. Super simple, takes no time at all, and it makes it even easier to go ahead and work it in with your fingers. So I'm taking one stick of butter here, and I'm gonna try it with a larger grate on my cheese grater. I'm just gonna press this across and grate it right in. See how easy that is? Super simple. There we go. All right. The butter is shredded into the flour mixture. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and pinch it together with my hands until it resembles like little tiny peas. I just wanna get the butter mixed in and to keep the integrity of the crust and so that it doesn't, uh, the butter doesn't melt away too quickly, I just wanna handle it as little as possible. So just kind of toss the butter into the flour mixture. Just kind of, just moving my fingers just pinching my fingers, pinching and rubbing, pinch and rub, just as I go along. The butter's almost completely worked in. I can feel it softening up a lot, so that tells me it's time to move on. But you see how it looks like coarse sand? That's okay, this is perfect. It doesn't look like pie crust right now, it doesn't look like much right now, but trust me, it's gonna come together in a matter of seconds. Okay, so my liquid component uh, usually you want to put just a couple tablespoons of cold water, and I mean ice cold water. Another trick, one of my favorites, is to use super cold vodka. So you put a couple tablespoons of vodka in there and it just brings it together and then really enhances that flakiness. So today, I've got a little something special. I've got a little extra bubbly for you right there. This is half a cup of tonic. You can use 7-Up or Sprite or any kind of clear carbonated beverage that you like. So just pour it in here and toss it all together. So this is going to bring everything in. There we go. And it still feels a little wet. No worries. That's why you keep your flour on hand right nearby, which is exactly what I have. So I'm going to scrape a little bit of this dough off of my fingers. I'm going to get in my reserve bowl here, grab a nice big handful of flour, and just sprinkle it on. That flour is going to help to absorb a lot more of that moisture, and this is going to give the pie crust, your pastry, a super silky texture. I mean, this is going to be the most tender pastry crust that you'll ever make, but it's all in that carbonation. It's just lovely. So this isn't sticking to my fingers nearly as badly as it was before, but I do need more flour. So I'm grabbing another full handful. I'm moving my bowl off to the side so I can flour my work surface. Now I'm going to turn my dough onto my floured surface and start working it, but lightly because I don't want to ruin the integrity of the, the butteriness, you know, like to make that butter melt too much. And the warmth of my hands is really going to soften up that butter. So I'm gonna pat this out into a rectangle. And from here, I'm gonna try fold it like a letter because I wanna make this a laminated dough. So I'm gonna fold it and fold it again. Good. Now I'm gonna turn it a quarter turn. And I'm gonna get my trusty kitchen bat right here and roll out 
my rectangle one more time. It's starting to stick to the rolling pin, you can see. So that means I need a little bit more flour. Grab just a pinch more and flour it up. There we are. Fold it over again and again. Make sure that your work surface stays flour because you don't want the dough sticking to it and making it difficult to peel up. So, another quarter turn, and I'm rolling out my rectangle one more time. Woo! We got a little sticky there. Sometimes that happens, so just get a little dough from the or a little flour from the counter, rub that, set it aside, and here we go. Another try fold. Just like a letter. And I think we'll do it one more time and call it good. So this is also building layers. This is building flakiness. There. Beautiful. All right. So here we go. I'm going to fold it one more time. And just let it set just like this. So we need to let this rest in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes, preferably an hour. So I'm going to wrap it up in some saran wrap. Let me get that out. Nice big sheet of plastic wrap right here. I'm just going to lay this down on the counter. Get my dough. Wrap it up really well. Not super tight, but not super loose either. Just enough to let it rest and let the butter re-solidify just a little bit in the refrigerator. So here you have it. Really nice, flaky pastry dough. We're gonna let this rest in the fridge and we'll be right back to roll it out. And uh, we'll just take it from there, okay. Our pie dough has rested for about 45 minutes. I gave it a little extra time. Um, it also gave me a chance to go ahead and like really put together a beautiful filling for my chicken pot pie for what I'm going to use this particular pastry crust for. So what I'm going to do now is lightly flour my uh, work surface right here, just a nice big handful of flour. And I'm just going to sprinkle it around like this. My oven is preheated to 400 degrees, so it's ready to bake. Nice laminated dough. So I put it down in the middle of the flour, so I have flour on that side. Now I'm going to turn it over and get some flour on the top, and I'm going to redistribute just like that. Okay, taking my rolling pin, and I'm just going to roll it out. I want it to be kind of hearty, so I can get a lot of those buttery, rich flakes. So I want to roll it out to about half an inch thick, and it's going to fit in my pie plate. Try and get it as round as I possibly can. All right, so this feels even. I don't feel any higher points or lower points. So the easiest way to get this onto my pie plate is to start at one end and just kind of roll it up on my rolling pin. Now I don't want this to stick, so I'm gonna buy just a little extra insurance and flour it really well so that way the pastry dough doesn't stick to itself. And just very lightly, Roll like this. I have my pie plate here. I'm going to lift my rolling pin and just unwind it. Perfectly, just like this. No holes, nothing. I have a beautiful solid pastry in my pie plate. So I'm going to very gently lift the edges and tuck it. So that way I have a nice smooth surface, a very solid surface. So all of the pie crust, all of this pastry is actually touching and making contact with the bottom of my plate. So the first thing I'm gonna do is trim the edges just a little bit. So this edge goes like right to the end of the pie, pie plate, which is great. I just wanna trim off the excess. So I go all the way around. And if I have a little fold, I have a little fold, no big deal all the way around the pie plate, and here's my excess. And I'm not gonna throw this away because I can easily reshape it and do something else with it. So from here, I take my fork and I just press into the crust all the way around. And there we go, all right. By a little extra insurance, I wanna dock the crust just a little bit. So I take my fork and go around just a few times in a few places, and this is going to allow steam to release 
and let it sit like nice and evenly in the pie plate. So this is docked and what we need to do now is put our pie weights in and I'm not one like to hold on to ball bearings or actual pie weights or anything. I like to go the old fashioned route and use dried beans. So right here, I have a sheet of aluminum foil that I've already like molded to the pie plate itself so this sits in nice and perfectly into the pie crust. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just by a little extra insurance, I'm going to get some olive oil. And because I don't want the foil to stick to the pie crust, I'm just going to drizzle very lightly a little bit of olive oil, just a little tiny bit, and that's to coat the surface. Because the last thing you want to do is have all those awesome flaky layers that you made into this pie crust come up and tear. You know, they just fall apart and tear whenever you pull the pie weights out. Okay, so this is going to sit in my pie plate just like that. And I have my jar of dried kidney beans right here. And I'm simply going to pour them in. going to help the pie hold its shape. So I just flatten them out like a little bit. We can go all the way to the side. Okay. And there you have it. Okay. This is going to go into my 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes. I don't want to fully cook the crust because I still want it to cook even more once I have my filling in. This is just to get it really nicely set. You know me well enough to know by now that I just couldn't help myself. I put together all of those scrap pieces of pie crust and rolled it out thick to another nice circle. So this could probably be a nice pie topper, but that's not good enough. I have some fresh strawberry preserves that I actually made myself. It's like strawberries, lemon juice, water, sugar, and salt. That's it. Super easy to make. I'll cover that another time for you. And I have right here a little dish of milk that I'm gonna use for a milk wash. I have my cookie cutter, and I think you know where this is going for I'm still a kid at heart and I need pop tarts. I know they're not going to be the uh, traditional rectangular shape, but circle works just as well. So I'm going to cut out a whole bunch of circles and get them ready for awesomeness. But that's the beautiful thing about this pie crust is that it doesn't matter if you're going savory or sweet, it works. It's just, it's so neutral and it's really light that it works. Okay, how many circles do I have? Two, four, six, eight, nine. We'll go for 10. And I can take the rest of this pie dough or this pastry dough and make more cutouts and I probably will. But for now, I'm gonna start with these five little pop tarts, these five little tartlets because I have 10 circles and I need two on each one. There we go. All right, so I'm going to put one on my cookie sheet right here. I'm just going to kind of spread these out a little bit. Uh huh. And five. Okay, so this is going to the side. This is going to go here for you guys to check it out and see. And I, of course, forgot my spoon to get the strawberry preserves out. So let me get that spoon for the preserves. And I don't need a lot, I need just a little bit, but look how nice and pretty and thick that is. No gelatin, none at all. This is just a natural pectin that comes from the fruit whenever you cook it, just like that. So it's all about cooking it, mm. oh, for the right length of time. Okay. Put just a little dab in the middle, so it's not quite a tablespoonful but enough to make a really pretty circle in the middle. Let's see. Okay. Good. I mean, for real, seasonal fruit, we can't go wrong. It's, it's just fantastic. Okay, so let's have the steam out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut in little X's on my dough right here. All right, this is where your milk, your milk wash comes in. Just wanna dip my nylon brush in just a little bit and go around the perimeter of my discs. All right, so that's 
I'm done. My first little sand dollar, if you will. And just put that on top. I just want to rest these on top of my little tartlets. I'm a waste not, want not kind of person. And if there's something that can be done with leftovers, with scraps, with whatever, I don't care if it's broccoli stalks or pastry crust or whatever, I'm gonna find a way to do something with it. So I'm gonna take my fork and go around and crimp it just like I did on my pie crust. All right, so now I'm gonna take my milk wash and just lightly brush and dab the top of these little these little tartlets, these little pies, these little jam-filled cookies, whatever you want to call them. These little bites of deliciousness. I mean, come on. Homemade pastry and homemade preserves. Now you know that's love. That's a lot of love. Okay. <laughs> Just made a big mess. Oh well. All right. Um, to really give these a little kiss of something sweet, I'm going to get some sugar. And I just want to very lightly rain a little bit of sugar. See it sprinkle? Just very lightly, a little kiss of something extra. All right, these are going to go into the oven. It's still set at 400 degrees. I'm going to let these bake for about 15 minutes. We'll see how they come out then. Okay. Here we go. The timer's gone off. 400 degrees for 15 minutes, and look at these, whoa, that's really hot. Okay, ah, I'm gonna a little towel here. And look at these guys. Look at this, this is from that extra pastry crust, a little bit of strawberry preserves, some milk and sugar, that's it, look at this. I mean, they're so cute. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and brave it. Ah. Oh, <laughs> and that's the beautiful thing of a still pack too, they don't stick, but they do get really golden brown. Oh, buddy. Okay. So I'm going to plate these up. Still golden brown. Crispy. These are better than any Pop-Tarts that you can get from the store. That, I promise. Look at this one. How pretty. Look. See? It's so fluffy. Look how cute. Look how cute that is. I had enough of the leftover dough because I pulled up all of the, the framing around the ones that circles that I cut out and I had enough leftover to make three more little tarts. So I put those together and I'm gonna put them on my baking sheet. There we go. Brush these guys with a little bit of milk and give them the same royal treatment that these other little tarts got. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like dinner is in the oven right now as well, you know, and that's the beautiful thing about multi levels and the same temperature oven, you can cook different things. But um, these are looking like they might be my dinner instead, you know. I'm just saying. Give them another little kiss of sugar, just a little kiss. There we go. Go ahead. Throw sugar over my shoulder for luck. I mean, I know you do that with salt, I don't know. Sugar counts too. <laughs> All right. These three are going into the oven, 400 degrees, 15 minutes. Can't stand it anymore. You've got to try this. I'm going to go with this guy in the middle. We're going to look at the layers. So can you see? Look at all these layers. Remember how we laminated the dough? How we folded it and then rolled it and folded it and rolled it and folded it and rolled it? We did it about four times. And you can see those beautiful buttery layers. Now, I didn't put any milk on the bottom of it, but look at how gorgeous and buttery and golden that is. This smells like it came from an expensive bakery. It kind of looks like it did. I mean, you know it's homemade, but we're gonna check it out. Listen to the snap. Did you hear it? I heard it. I can see it. Look at that. Those layers. Oh my word. Look at this. Homemade filling. Mmm. This, this is crazy pant. I mean, this is awesome. You get like a little dollop of whipped cream or ice cream or a little creme fraiche or whatever you want. These are good on their own. But the pastry is so light. 
it's so flaky, it's so buttery. And the preserves are not overly sweet at all. They're homemade and that's the best way to do it too because then you control the sugar, you control the quality of ingredients. And the better quality that you have, I mean, the better product you're gonna have, it's kind of a no-brainer. Mm. We go hand in hand. Anyway, I think these are definitely going to be my go-to. These are awesome. Okay, Kitchen Bravo shows you what to do with extra pie crust. A few extra things that you've got laying around. Enjoy. <laughs> Just helping. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My stick. Have fun demolishing stuff. Oh, gosh. <laughs>